What's going on guys, Teddy Baldessar from teddybaldessar.com. If you're new to this channel, this is where we do a deeper dive with reviews of watches that we have available for purchase on our website as an authorized dealer of all the brands that we carry. In this video, we're looking at the Timex Waterbury Automatic Open Aperture. So in this video, deep dive review, things to consider both in the positive and negative end at the end, and then also all relevant links will be in the description down below if you are interested in purchasing. So guys, let's take a closer look at this watch. First looking at a rundown in the specs, we have a case size of 40 millimeters, thickness of 12 millimeters, lug width of 20 millimeters, lug to lug of 49.1 millimeters, water resistance of 50 meters, movement is an automatic Miyota 821A, crystal is mineral, price $259, but if you use promo code first order at checkout, first time customer of the store, you can get 5% off your first purchase. So when looking at Timex overall in the last few years, it's been a lot of approach to trying to transition the focus into mechanical automatic watches. It first started with the Marlin series and then just basically took off from there. And now they've been really rolling it out across all of their different collections. The model that we have here is a member of their Waterbury collection and uniquely does have an open aperture design, which is kind of a love it or hate it idea. And many brands have an offering of this type, but nice to see Timex jumping into this world. But let's start by taking a look at this watch on the wrist. Now with a 40 millimeter case and a 49 millimeter lug to lug, this one is going to wear larger than what that case size might indicate. I would say it wears closer to a 41 millimeter case as a result of that longer lug to lug distance, as well as the thin bezel on the outside. It's going to make this dial pop out a bit more. I would say you probably have to have a medium size wrist and up to make this one work for you with that being considered, but still probably a good everyday wear for many people out there. The case comes in mixing of brushing and polishing, polishing along the outside of that bezel there, and then brushing across the lugs as well as on the side of the case. But you are getting a nice little kind of chamfer there on the lugs, which is coming in high polish. At the three o'clock side of the case, we have the inclusion of a crown. It's going to operate in traditional fashion, hand winding at the first position, and then adjusting the hands at the farthest out point. The good point here compared to some other automatics from Timex is this is a hacking movement here. So this is the 821A, which is going to get some added decoration as well, but we'll get a little bit more on that in a moment, but that's gonna help with setting precise time, certainly. Now between the lugs in this piece, we have a 20 millimeter lug width. The strap on this is actually not too bad. It's kind of a slightly padded leather contrast, genuine leather uh, strap and kind of a tan color, which really works well with the blue dial surface. It does have quick release pins. We can offer up that for any straps, any leather straps on our site for $4. Just follow up to the orders email after you make a purchase. We can happily do that for you. But I would definitely take advantage of a variety of different straps. 20 millimeters is a great lug width to take advantage of. And I could see this working on a variety of different straps, maybe getting into the world of reptilians. I could see it maybe working on a NATO in some instances, but I'd probably stick to the leathers on this one. Just kind of keep it looking a bit more dressed up. Jumping back to the center, we do have mineral glass providing view of the blue dial surface within. It comes in a slightly reflective, slightly, I'd say shining kind of surface. It's not like a sunburst totally, but it does provide a bit of a reflective surface for the actual dial elements above it. Now you're gonna see applied markers for each of the hour markings. You're then going to also see a simple line minute track along the outside. The writing of Waterbury is going to be tucked down at the 6 o'clock. At the top of the dial, you're going to see the writing of Timex Automatic. And then at the center, you're going to have blunted stick hands containing loom to match the applied markers. The loom, just given the surface area that it is occupying, is going to be, I would say, a little underwhelming. It's not going to do a great job, but this watch does provide more of a casual, even kind of dressy look in some aspects. So I don't want to knock too many points there because it's really not trying to be very sporty. And then at the seven o'clock, probably the most notable feature of this piece is that open aperture providing view of the beating balance within. It's kind of outlined in the steel frame. This sometimes can kind of be a hit or miss. Some people like these more open aperture, I think in more affordable watches, this is definitely the way to go instead of a, say a skeletonized dial because typically those can come off pretty tacky. I think this is a much more appropriate execution of how to do this right. And say you are somebody new to automatics or mechanical watches, this could be a nice feature to have. Now flipping this watch over, we do have view of the Miyota caliber within the automatic 821A. So a couple added benefits with this movement compared to some others, it's certainly not the looker, but compared to some of the really utilitarian Miyota calibers, which are very reliable in terms of just ticking and keeping pretty solid time, this one does have a little added finish. So you get that hollowed out rotor, and then you also get a little just kind of Cote de Genève style finish across the actual main plate there, and then also on the balance bridge. So it does look pretty nice for all things considered, even compared to some other Seiko counterparts or movements that are going more for the timekeeping element more than the design element, which is gonna be the case for pretty much any affordable 
automatic movement that you find out there. Miyota is a movement manufacturer underneath the Citizen Watch umbrella. And you're commonly going to be seeing their movements in watches of this price range that are going to be going for third-party automatics. This caliber is going to operate at 21,600 vibrations per hour or 3 hertz. Features hand winding and hacking on this piece. So hacking stopped in the second hand when you pull out the crown to the farthest position. You have a 40 hour power reserve approximately. And when testing this one, putting it on the time grapher, getting around 10 seconds a day in terms of accuracy out of the box. You're going to be seeing more of that minus 20 to plus 40 seconds a day. So pretty conservative estimates by Miyota. But just to set a little bit of an expectation with this movement. One other point about this movement is that rotor is quite noisy. You're going to feel it a little bit on the wrist. If you've ever worn a Valju 7750 or any other Valju chronograph caliber, it's not going to necessarily compare to that, but you're going to get a little bit of that rotor jiggle and feel it on the wrist. It's not a deal breaker, but just something to be aware of. Okay, so now just to unpack a few things to consider on this piece. When looking at Timex watches in general, I think they've done a good job of bridging the gap between enthusiasts as well as mass market and I think that's really what these mechanical watches are doing a good job for. This one I see as being kind of another reinterpretation of trying to bridge that gap. Taking an automatic mechanical focus with that open aperture and making it a little bit more mass appealing. For somebody that has handled a lot of different mechanical watches I don't think they're going to be wowed by the open aperture here but it is kind of a nice thing to have for certain type of consumers. It is going to be a larger case so that is one downside of this but you are getting a hacking movement here. I think from a value perspective this one's a little bit better too because you are also getting a little bit of decoration on the movement for whatever that's worth. And from a versatility standpoint, with the straps and then also the dial, I think it's a pretty attractive looking watch for what it is for under $300, around $250. And I think this is a decent watch to look at if you have about $250 to spend, looking to get into the world of automatics, you have more of a casual style, and just want to have some nice variety with different straps and different outfits that you can pair this one with. So guys, thank you again so much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. Really would appreciate that. Also, hit the link in the description if you are interested in learning more about this piece and also purchasing it. We're an authorized dealer of all the brands that we carry, full factory warranty, and one of the most secure places you can buy a watch online. So guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I'll see you all very soon.